Welcome back to Geek Show Arcade. Hey everyone. Hey. hey. Hi. It's Geek Show. It's Geek Show Arcade, guys. Hey. It's arcade. Hi. <laughs> beep boop. Beep boop. Beep boop. Beep boop. Let's introduce the panelists. Next to me, we got Jaren. Hey, this is Jaren. You can find me on Twitter at Jaren. On a diagonal from Jaren, we got Lando. Hey, you can find me on X and Blue Sky mm -hmm. at Landon mm -hmm. Conover, and I do tweet there. Lang. <laughs> Next to Lando, we got Owen. Hey, you can find me on Blue Sky. I've tweeted more than than Jaren, or no, that more than Landon, and uh, posted probably more than me on Jaren X. too. Yeah, posted. I posted. Sorry, I posted yeah. more than Landon on there, even after all his whining. So um, yeah, follow me on there at Techno One. Nice or not? I mean, I'm not really doing anything. Don't follow me then, for heck's sake. And we have a host. His name is Tony. I was going to let him check out. I was going to let that Sharon. silence go for as Thanks. long as we I could. Was. I was going to see you if know Owen caught up. You know what? I wasn't ready. Sharon couldn't stand it. Could <laughs> give me a give me another go. Here we go. You know what? But the coolest guy I know that's on those platforms is our oh. host, and it's Tony. Flattery will get you somewhere. Check I me out on Twitter well. at Quad T Tony, <laughs> or on Blue Sky at Quad T, or on other Geek Show podcasts. All right. I just I just got a pop up on my screen that says. Tony approves. So I know that my, I've been, you know, I've been playing too much Baldur's Gate when all I see is like Tony approves. Yeah, but, but right. you saw it. Yeah. In the upper left hand mm -hmm. corner of your vision. <laughs> Tony mm -hmm. approves. That's Tony amazing. approves. My, yep. Like, my standing okay. with Tony just went up when I flatter him. So it's going up. Uh, let's see. Do we have any uh, emails? Yes, we do. We got one from Argyle Spurton. <laughs> Hello. Uh, he says, hey, my fellow gamers, have a question for you about the new path tracing and DLSS 3.5. Oh, that baby. Will be available yeah. in Cyberpunk. Buckle, to, buckle up, bu buckle up, Lando. It's time Here comes to talk the graphics hole. cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That will be available in Cyberpunk 2077 at the time of your reading this on your podcast. My question is about using this new feature in game as I recently upgraded my video card to a 4070 Ti. A yeah, few months ago. baby. I ran the optimization feature on the GeForce Experience controller, and it doesn't enable this in-game for some reason. I ran the benchmark that comes with the game, and with the path tracing off, I was able to get 80-plus FPS. Then reran it with path tracing on, as my video card should be able to handle this. My FPS drops to 33 on the benchmark program. This makes me question my upgrade, as I won't be able to enjoy DLSS 3.5 in all its glory, and wondering if it's another issue. I have an AMD Ryzen 5 5600X with 16 gigs of RAM running in my current rig, so I don't know if that's an issue. Any ideas on what I should do? Thanks for the help, and are you guys going to jump back into Cyberpunk with this new update? 100% I am. and Me too, actually. I played it for 30 minutes last night for the first time I, in a year. I... Uh did what I always say not to do, and I pre-ordered the expansion. Mm. I pre-ordered a video game. Can't believe you. Shame. Had, I could shame, stop myself. I know. Shame, shame on me. Shame. Hmm. I know. <laughs> easy. Easy there, Hannah Wad, Wad, Wadding Wadsworth. <laughs> I can't remember how what her last name is. Anyway, um, so I guess the first, first question would be, what resolution are you trying to play it at? If you're trying to play it at 1440p, I would say that there's something probably off in the settings if you're only getting 30 FPS. My guess is you don't have frame, frame generation gen. on. That's what I'm thinking. You don't have frame yeah. gen on. Now, if you're trying to play at 4K, uh, you should probably still be getting pretty close to, I mean, like more than 30 frames per second. But it is quite a bit more taxing at 4K versus 1440p. So. Frame generation is a must-have feature and anyone that has it available to them enable it yeah make um, sure how do you, you do that? that how do you do it it's, it's just, just a, a it's just a toggle yeah just the, a toggle in the, in the graphic game. setting in the game um oh. some people out there don't like it for whatever reason they, they think it's cheating who are those but, people uh video games are cheating from the very beginning yeah like, the whole point first. of the video game <laughs> is to <laughs> render something yeah, virtually something. I mean, uh, technically, level of detail adjustments in games that have that's been cheating. there for decades—that's cheating. Baking in your software, breaking in your shadows—that's cheating. cheating. Baking in your lighting—that's cheating. Yep. So that's what they did before ray tracing, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So yeah. make sure you have frame generation on, and make sure you have ray reconstruction on. Yep. Um, and the reason you probably didn't see it in the recommended settings for your GeForce experience is because in the GeForce experience app, uh, you can adjust a slider 
on each game if you want higher fidelity or higher frame rate. And chances are uh, your settings were more on your, your slider was more on the frame rate side than it was the fidelity side. So yeah. that's hmm. probably what happened there. Uh, as far as your specs go, uh, I don't want to say you need to get a new CPU and more RAM. He but wants you so bad. For Cyberpunk 2077, you might want a new CPU and more no, RAM. No, I think the 5600X would be good enough. Because Cyberpunk is well-optimized for CPU. That, that's Did you why see what that. their recommended settings are now for 2.0 and Yeah, they, they upped it, but the 5600X is the same series of processor we have. Yeah, but we it's have, half as many cores. Yeah, but it doesn't use 12 cores anyway. No game does. Cyberpunk's pretty pretty optimized thread-wise. But before you go out buying a new CPU, um, check and see how much RAM is being used while you're playing the game. 16 might be a little bit on the uh, fully lean. utilized side. You might want to bump that up to 32 before you do anything else. And RAM right now is pretty cheap. So you know, First thing you do is enable frame generation and then see how you like it. Well, obviously, yeah. Jaren. <laughs> Follow the settings first. Oh, I'm learning as much as this guy here. I I just play the thing that downloads. I go to Steam, I oh, install I a game, and I turn it on, and it goes beep, 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 and I play. I don't go into the settings and change anything. I expect Why them to you are missing a whole 30, part of the game. Ti Owen, why did you buy that if you're not make getting you are, full use out of it? You're missing half the fun of PC gaming for your tweaking approval. the settings, Jaron. Just for your approval. That's it. That's the only reason. <laughs> You found so, it, and I felt like I had to. There you go, Argo Sporting. You go. Good luck on your journey. I can't wait to dive back into Cyberpunk myself as well. Very excited. What's for... your favorite part of that game, Tony? What draws you to it? The, the side quests? The graphics only? Everything. The, like, the every, graphics okay. and the art direction are so cool. I have to say that seeing it on your computer, because we did go up and turn on Cyberpunk... And I was impressed with the It was light. very pretty. Like, it yeah. was very pretty. It's crazy. And then I love CD Projekt Red's uh, side quests. Their main quests are usually good, too, but it, they really excel at the side quests. Um, and then uh, the gameplay in Cyberpunk, I think, is a lot of fun. Especially, it's it's supposed to be super overhauled in 2.0. So I'm, I'm excited to... I'm going to start a new character over... Like I, I was planning on actually reviewing Phantom Liberty... Um, but then I decided I'm not going to because I want to start a fresh game from the beginning, and so it would take 50 hours for me to get to the point where I can play Phantom Liberty as part of the DLC. And that's so a lot of hours. It would not it would not be a timely review at all. So I'm not right. gonna. I'm just saving it for me. I'm saving Phantom Liberty just for Tony. I can play it at my leisure. So there you go. Good luck on your journey. Let us know how it goes. Any other emails? Got an email from Lang. Uh, subject, which Teenage Mutant Ninja panelist does this email make me? Hmm. Uh, Casey Jones? I April don't know how to answer that. <laughs> April O'Neil. <laughs> <The, laughs> Casey Jones? Yeah. The, spunky Casey Jones. the spunky reporter out on the streets. Maybe uh, what's the what's the, the rabbit? Um, man, why am I having a brain fart on the... Uh, the name of the the rabbit in the Ninja Turtles. Okay, rabbit in. It's like Yos Usagi Yojimbo. Miyamoto Usagi. Oh, is that it? I thought it was Yojimbo. Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, is that all? Is that all there is in the email? Oh yeah, yeah. Y Usagi Yojimbo. See, I told you. But his full name is Miyamoto Yusagi. Anyway, um, to the email, he says, Arcadians, I think I've easily passed Landon for contribution to the podcast. Am I close to passing Probably. up James, or do I need to make up a game for everyone? Discussion time. If you had to live in any game universe, which would it be and why? For me, I'd be a warlord of sorts in a dynasty warrior kind of universe, Lang. Well, your question is flawed, Lang, because... You need to know if you're going to live in that universe, are you a main character or are you an NPC? Dude, if I'm an NPC, I want to live uh, in the Animal Crossing universe because yeah, then I won't probably. die. Mm -hmm. But I do not want to live in any sort of action game universe as an NPC because either I'm going to be they dead, maimed, or all of my pots will be broken. Mm. So, <laughs> Who's breaking my pots? That's good. I'm I'm gonna... just every day. Hmm. 
I'm going to choose Monkey Island. That'd be fun. Yeah. I, I love that setting. And uh, if the cool Monkey Island music was playing all the time, I'd be happy with that. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to jump off of Tony's um, Animal Crossing and go to Stardew Valley. Never die. Hmm. Low stakes. Nice, friendly people. Just living a life. Stardew that sounds Valley. Yeah. nice. Good choice. I'm, just a, I'm a street sweeper in Candy Crush all day long. <laughs> I just clean that road. I clean that road and I eat candy. Like, How me. could you go wrong? Mm-mm. Can't. Delicious. If I'm a if I'm a main character, I'm going to Cyberpunk universe. Oh, really? That's so depressing. It's so fascinating. Uh, <laughs> okay. Or it would it would it would either be like Cyberpunk or perhaps Zelda or Witcher. You know, Baldur's Gate three. Come on, say it. Yeah, I mean Baldur's Gate three, man. Main uh, character with an eye tentacle. I don't yep. know. Yep. Star Citizen. Star Citizen would be a Ooh, super awesome man. Okay. main character. Sign me up. Kind Sign of, me up for that yeah, one. I'd probably go with Star Citizen. Mario actually. wouldn't be so bad, tripping on hallucinogenics like all the yeah. time. Eating mushrooms. Mario, you could jump really yeah, yeah. But if I, had, if I had to be an NPC, I'd probably go with something Stardew Valley or something like that. Yeah. Even main cal- character Stardew Valley would be great. Hmm. You never die. Yeah. Living your life. Get bored farm. after a while. Hmm. All right. Thanks for writing and laying. DLC Let's see. will always happen. We... You know what? I, I'm going back. Hold uh-oh, on. Uh-oh. Innkeeper. Owen's innkeeper. Back. Innkeeper in an RPG. That's all. Everybody's happy to see me. I get to raise my prices as you go through the game. You know? That's, that's a bad. good That's a good okay. choice. Yep. Yep. I you get to go. see. You get to meet all the heroes. I hear all the stories, yep, right? You hear I all serve the them there. Yeah. Would that's you have to mm. buy all their crap they want to sell to you, though? Everything. But that's okay because <laughs> I got <laughs> unlimited money and I'm going to charge them for it later. So I, it, it all comes out. It all comes up. I'll tell you what. Point. I wouldn't want to be a shopkeeper in Baldur's Gate three with nope. Owen playing. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Hours. I've sp- I, let me tell you. Just, just quick, quick, quick side note. Promise. <laughs> I have spent hours of that game just emptying vendors. The same That's vendor it. over and over. The same again. vendor. Well, he catches me, and I just save scum. Yeah. And, and try he didn't again. Catch you. Oh man. Hours of the game just stealing from vendors. Yeah, let me tell you, Owen and I are playing the same game, having a great time, but having vastly <laughs> different experiences. Vastly <laughs> different experiences. Which is a uh, testament to how cool this game yeah. is. Tony you know? was like, wait, what? I'm like, yeah, this is what this guy did. He just bailed. I sucked in a worm, and he bailed. Dick. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> it was. Sorry. We talked the other day, and Owen was telling me these stories. I'm just like, none of... None of the people in my party <laughs> act like this. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> and I told him he's going to end up with a Jaren ending, like from Metro Exodus. You can hey. end up with the worst why ending. Why is my name associated with that? <laughs> oh, you, got you the know worst why. Ending. You know. <laughs> All right. Well. Let's see. We got some. Uh, we got some interesting stories to talk about today in the gaming world. Uh, let's kick it off with. Um, it's finally happening, guys. Finally, the big news this week. Finally, Microsoft and Activision are approved. Confirmed. By the UK. I for thought it was merger. a provisional approval. Uh, well, I mean, it's pretty much done. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. It's a yeah. done deal at this point. The, the EU, the EU's CMA or whatever they're called. The UK. They, yeah, the UK's CMA. They, they, signed off finally with some with some provisions right so yeah well there's a revised it's the, it, we talked about this a couple weeks ago microsoft proposed a revised deal that uh offloaded in the uk all of um activision and blizzard's streaming game streaming rights to uh ubisoft and what so if game streaming just completely tanks in the next couple of years how funny would that be <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's a the thing, kind of like NFTs. The, Should the we problem talk about those with, for a while? I don't think it'll ever tank as hard as NFTs, Shut but up, if you want to know about that, <laughs> go listen to Geek Show Help Desk. <laughs> Look at that. Look at Tony reeling us in. Yeah. So the Keeping thing, us on target. The thing about uh, uh, streaming games, like, so when we say that, we're talking about playing a game from a computer where the game is rendered in a data center. Not GeForce Now, on your machine. Cloud, GeForce Xbox now, Cloud Games. Yep, all those kinds of things. But um, I can only imagine that tanking if infrastructure doesn't improve. Exactly. And that's what I was going to say. And it I can't see that happening. It doesn't right. matter how 
um, powerful the data center is or how weak the data center is, everything hinges on the network connection. And if mm -hmm. infrastructure doesn't improve, then it's not going to go anywhere. But if it does continue to improve, then this might, you could see this become a viable way for people to play games well, on the regular. What you, what you, you know? see when you see, when you have fiber to the home being as ubiquitous as co coax, right? You're going to see services like this not just in gaming, but like TV, all sorts of things. I are could see computing going that. that way too, just put, getting a thin yeah. client on your desk. Yeah, right? I don't need absolutely a, how powerful oh, sure. anymore. Well, yeah, we've heard about the thin client for. Ever, I, it, I guess the that's, pendulum that's goes good back and forth all the time. Work situations, yeah. It'll largely. be it'll be a case by case basis. You know, it, mm -hmm. it's definitely not a one size fits all situation, and neither would be game streaming. You know, game streaming would be. There's always going to be people like Jaron and me that want to have the hardware sitting next to us on yeah. the desk coming away. Do, do you, you know? think Tweakers. those people will shrink over time, and people like me where just want to stream the games will grow over time? I don't because of price that, points. I, uh, I don't think that hardware is going to shrink, like hardware buyers are going to shrink, but I do think people in your shoes, that that group's going to grow. I think, I think so it's going to attract more people. I think the console's but it's not dead gonna, in, that, in that place. Here's, here's yeah, why it's not going to so pull away. From I'm going to make the, a little bit slightly varied prediction. I think the younger generation, people, you know, Gen Z and what are, what are the other ones? Whatever's underneath that. The, the younger Alpha. one, younger yeah. folks, right? Um, they don't want to put the work in like you guys do. I don't think. I get the feeling they want to do That's more like I want. I want the Netflix stream it to me now. I want it. Just give it instant, to me. Instant I don't want to work for it. You know what I'm saying? I think the instant gratification is going to cause uh, as you guys start to age out, those people are not going to age in. Does that make I, sense? What I'm saying? First of all, ouch. Second of all, <laughs> um, I don't think. Here's the thing, and I think it wasn't meant to happens. be a knock on you. No, I just no, no, think yeah, that's what's going where it's going with Netflix, like. I think you might be partially correct, but here's the thing is I think that there's always going to be a healthy population of people that once they get a taste of doing it themselves, they like I it. Think, I agree. I think, you know I think I mean? it'll become, I think PC game in that way, if, if I'm following Lando's logic, you guys will become the ham radio operators. Yes. You know, uh, the, I don't the think enthusiasts. We'll ever be, I don't think the we'll ever be that small percentage wise. True. But, but uh, well, the and the other thing, to, the other thing to consider too, you got to remember, is as this stuff gets more powerful, it also becomes less resource intensive too. So, I mean, we could right. get to the point where desktops maybe aren't really needed anymore, and everything you could want you right? could get in a laptop, yeah. and it'll run things at 4K max settings, 120 frames per second. Well, just off imagine of a laptop, if you, you, know? you in, or you buy a virtual laptop, you buy a virtual PC now, you own it outright. And there's companies that host oh, it for you, but you own a virtual that's, system. Sure, that's that you, a possibility. That you, then you go into a cart and you say, okay, I want my system to have this graphics card now. And it's well, an that's upsell. That's what AWS like does already. Yeah, right, well, exactly. It, but it's just for the consumer, though, at the consumer right. level. So you know how with cell phones, like the uh, silicon increases we have year to year, we don't really see much anymore because it's just so overpowered anyway. I wonder if we'll ever reach that with gaming and that right. it'll just become cheap. You know, I bet, yeah, I bet we, I bet we, I bet we will. I think if you look at and compare games over the past, say, twenty years, the leaps and bounds from like the the SNES to the sixty four were huge. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Now, year over year, you're seeing really cool things happen, but it's not like as subtle. big a jump. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, we're the, definitely the slowing down on that curve, especially for someone who's not into it. The the improvements are subtle. It's uh, you know it's incremental. Now, if you're if you're you know way into it like like us, then it's like oh look at the ray well, tracing this year versus last yeah. year. It looks so and, much better, and it's running at a higher but even, frame rate. Even still, it's not the same kind of jump as going from like the no, SNES no, no, right, to the sixty four. Right. You know saying, what I'm saying? That was like oh my goodness, right? Kind of a jump. I'm, what I'm saying is it's it uh, we're gonna get to we are gonna get to a point. I think probably Pretty within soon. the next twenty years. Oh, I'd say sooner than that. Because uh, the the thing the thing that we'll always be pushing further to is once you get the graphics down, the next thing that'll be is physics, and you got to get all the physics correct mm -hmm. for every object yeah. in the world and things like that. There, there's always going to be room for improvement, but I do think 
graphically, we probably will hit a plateau where if some if a game developer wants something to be photorealistic, it won't be that hard hard to have hardware out there for everyone to make well, it look photorealistic. DLSS ten will be easy, right, Tony? Okay, so let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> Thank you, Jaron. Good transition. Everyone is freaking out about DLSS ten online because someone from NVIDIA speculated and hmm. talked about a hypothetical DLSS DLSS S S S S ten. Um, right now we're at DLSS three point five, and if you ask me, it's getting to the point where the naming convention needs to change because it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless you were there from the beginning. Um, so in a in an article, or I should say in a in a uh, roundtable discussion organized by my favorite YouTube channel, Digital Foundry. Um, various video game industry experts talked about the future of AI in the gaming world. And one of them just, one of the guys from NVIDIA in the discussion just said, Theoret- let me see if I can find the exact quote so I don't misquote here, but uh, I thought it was right down. There it is. Uh, his name was, uh, his last name's Cantaz- Cantanzaro. Cantanzaro suggested that the 2018 demo which what they're talking about was a completely AI generated image and walk Mm. through this area in 2018 uh, was a peek into a major growth area of generative AI and gaming. And what he said, DLSS 10 in the far, far future is going to be a completely neural rendering system. The result will be more immersive and more beautiful games than most can imagine today. Now understand, He's just saying, hypothetically, DLSS right. 10, he's just arbitrarily choosing a number. Right. He's not saying they have all of this on the roadmap, and DLSS no. 10 <laughs> is when AI becomes the, you, you know. You think this Canazon, Canazaro is getting his butt chewed by NVIDIA, do you think? He's I don't like, think so, because this, yeah. this is just the this is just internet, the right. internet and freaking media outlets twisting things to get clicks. Yeah. 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 If you watch Sensible. it, Sensible. it was just... It was obviously not what the media is making it out. Yeah, just yeah. hypothetical speculation, you know. Mm. Uh, now that being said, do I want to see it? You bet I do. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> that would be cool. Can you imagine completely neur- uh, what did it say? A neural uh, network neur- rendering. Neural neural rendering. So every scene for every person is different. That's yeah. slightly like 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 if you walk through that same scene, we're not that far at a away. different at a different on a different day than say when I did, then you get a slightly different sun shadow or a different NPC in that corridor or something like, I, I think that's really cool to think. About. I bet we're only five, maybe 10 years away from that at most. Well, the thing that he's talking, the thing that specifically to that Cantazaro was talking about here was that it, it creates the whole thing out of its neural network the designers no don't art have direction. To, yeah, no the art designers don't have to go or, in and create the textures and place the textures. Right. And, I, with, right. with with things like You think like we're Dolly, only ten years away from that? No way, Jose. Oh, Not I, a I would think of I mean, look at Dolly three right now, dude. The things that thing's doing, we're yeah. we're much yeah, closer than you think we are. It's has. still but working on fingers. We, so. we would have to have that in real <laughs> time though. We'd have to have it in real time at sixty frames per second, you know? Yeah. Or or higher. Higher I bet we're closer than you guys think we are. Uh, just, I mean, if you would have asked an AI specialist about ChatGPT even three years ago, they'd have been like, "Yeah, that's ten years away," and here we are. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you got a point there. I bet, I bet, I bet, you within five to ten years, we are really close to that, if not there. That's going to absolutely upend the game designing process, the game mm-hmm. development process. Art, the art, the whole, yeah, all the section of the credits won't exist anymore. Well, yeah, it's, it's the whole like thing made the, the, by Tony made by, and yeah, maybe. Dolly Ten. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you look at things like the the Star Wars and actors made and the things Tony they're Bob. looking to do right now, the big actor strike has been all about this lately. Um, being able to use their likeness in AI in movies, right? That's a we're we're just a step away from games, in my opinion. Yeah, and the uh, actor strike actually uh, seems like it's coming to games. It is. As they well. have a tentative deal. Well, and the, yeah, Jaren, I, that's I, you, Jaren. What? We're talking about your article. Yeah, I gave you a Second, segue, dude. Se- oh, I totally missed that. Holy uh, <laughs> so the writer strike 
it's sounding like it has come to an end, but the actor strike with movies still, still going ongoing, yeah. and it may be coming to the video game industry as well. Um, they have negotiations um, starting September 26th, and uh, SAG-AFTRA, they have given authorization to strike if necessary. Hmm. So same kind of thing. And this is this is all based around AI and video games and using voice actors' voices via AI in video games. Well, they want they want right? the same well, that's their big, that one of their big sticking strike. points. They want more yeah, money, better benefits, exactly. better benefits, better working hours. Like this is what yeah, all of strike, that. But right? well, it's, big it's point is AI that. stuff. Better working conditions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think and they want, then, they, want uh, to, they want capitalism to work for them, which is yeah, exactly. I mean, well, when you are when you're the asset, mm-hmm. this is the power you wield, right? Exactly. So. Well, and then not only is it like all the things you guys said, but also residuals. That's the big. Mm, that's the that's big, a good big, one too. the big, big. Right. Uh, that's the one for writers. Yeah, writers and actors. And actors. Residuals on streaming platforms was because don't they was make the nothing? Thing. If it yeah. gets put like when Seinfeld got pushed to Netflix or so whatever, little. they got not like almost nothing for that. Yep. Pennies. So, yeah, we could see that happen with uh, gaming. And if it does, um, well, hopefully the freaking studios come to a, a good deal quickly so that we don't end up having a big. Yeah, I think the, I think the one that's going to affect games. most is that new, stu- that no. new um, Spider Man 2 game. One of no, the voice really actors didn't. in that game is a big deal, and they want to use him to promote, to promote the game, right? And if well, they're on strike, he can't go do that. Oh yeah, I mean that's true, but that that game that game is beyond really needing any more marketing. It's but still, you know, it hurts. But it a would little be bit. an example to use. But we're for all sure, we're yeah. all com- But in the in the gaming world, it does it does not even matter. We are all <laughs> so completely desensitized to a game being delayed. <laughs> that we're just like oh that okay. game's that game's done it's coming out yeah. for sure in October yeah. but there's there's others but like but like but yeah, any but like any others. game like if the, if the if the strike goes into video games we'll, like the community's gonna be like oh it's delayed okay yeah whatever like, like we'll, yeah. we'll work on our backlogs we'll work on our backlog <laughs> <laughs> go play Borderlands three again am I right Tony <laughs> no now let's go so play Baldur's Gate three again yeah, Baldur's Gate again yeah. mm-hmm. uh, so who's who's negotiating with SAG after now. Of the gaming companies, Jaren. Uh, oh, good question. I, I don't know. Good it's d- it's down at the bottom. Just scroll paragraph down. Four. Well, if you know, go ahead, man. Okay, Activision, Blind Light, Disney, Character Voices Incorporated, EA, Epic Games, Insomniac, Spider Man, Take Two, VoiceWorks Productions, WB Games, and someone called Formosa Interactive. Hey, those are big. Those are big. This is the, the big, big hitters. Big you yeah. Know? They're, for, and they're, so the they're publishers. already they're already negotiating with that sag after oh, okay. yeah so hopefully it doesn't come to a strike but if it does uh i support the actors i mean they they yeah. should be getting well, paid what they're worth 100 percent got and also i mean it makes sense for these guys to negotiate because they've seen these guys have the wherewithal to stand for it so mm-hmm. yep all right uh well let's see let's talk let's talk about other companies making poor decisions uh unity is still in the news <laughs> oh man <laughs> so they those guys those guys um those guys bailed back they walked way way back on their stuff uh ceo i think apologized um but it doesn't really matter at this point they've already um, lost the trust of the developers they are yeah these guys all the developers especially indie developers but like big big people are like saying hey they did it once. Mm-hmm. the The backlash was so horrible that, for their own bottom line, they had to walk it back. But right now, the only thing that's being talked about in those boardrooms is how they can fix their financial projections that they had said this would fit, this would do. That it would and, work and make and, them and, money. And, mm-hmm. and now and it's now, not so going now to. All and now all they're trying to do is fix those projections to somehow work. So there's no promise in the future that they won't do this. So Unity did come back and they they rolled back a lot of the stuff um a lot of the stuff they said they they basically said if you're using an older version you don't have to this won't apply to you um only people using what the 2023 it's iteration will have shocking to that they thought they could make this right retroactive yeah yeah oh yeah that <laughs> and who wants to like and then who wants to use an old engine anyway um well, let me but, tell you, I'll bet there's a lot of devs out there that wouldn't mind using an older engine because it's more stable and they can just right. 
hack on other things to it that they want to use yep. rather than fully update to the new version that costs more money. Right. But I think True. Owen's point is over time, older engines get older, and you don't want to use older, older ones sure, right? over just, time. They're yeah. just, they're just years, letting it atrophy. Years right? down the so, road, that's going to be a problem for sure. Yeah. Because they'll just let it atrophy, like just like who's gonna inst- who's gonna build a, a game right now for Windows XP? Yeah, you know, like they just you sure. won't ever do that in the in the future. Um, but there is a one of the things that happened is there's been a developer group that has been like their shill. I mean, these guys put together events, they bring developers together, they promote them, they they talk about ways to to use the engine and to to make it more efficient and all the, like there's a big collaboration. They're called Boston university or, uh, Boston unity group. Uh, bug is their, is their acronym. And they are closing down. They called it quits over this. That's Um, it. We're done. Unity dev group. They, they dissolved after 13 years, uh, completely. er And and they're in their words, completely eroded company trust. Wow. And uh, yeah, so they they'll be doing their last little departure, their last little meeting. I think they're having one more uh, as uh, I think it's me on the 27th. So a day ago, if you've or a couple days, I don't know. Uh, but they're they're going to do a, a last little Zoom meeting, a, a meeting during via Zoom. And they're basically dissolving. Um, hmm. They're unthinkably hostile is to users. Uh, even and they said even in the new concessions with the updated pricing model, uh, you know, disproportionately affects the success of indie indie studios in the community. Um, so and so, bad. they they uh, they came at them basically. Or they're going, and which is weird, which sucks because these guys were a big entry point for a lot of engineers up and coming, like yeah. wanting to get in and and use the Unity engine. This is where you went to ask the experts and, mm. and to, and to be, and to really get your, to get into it. So it's unfortunate and it's, you know, I don't know. It's just bad choices overall. By yeah. any day. I don't oh. know that walking it back is going to, it's going to take years if they can. And they, and they didn't fully walk it back either. Like they just basically said, okay, we heard you. You're really mad. We're going to not make you do it for the old stuff. And, but uh, the new stuff, We'll still I, gonna do it. I can't imagine any game developer at all right now. New new game development thing. You know what? We should use Unity. Yeah, like, no only, one's gonna do that after no. this. After this, there's <laughs> I, there is no way in the cold eighties. Do you know who the president of Unity is? The old president of EA, who was a big fan of loot boxes and oh. stuff. Mm-hmm. Like that. It all that, tracks now. You know that tracks. What? It that just tracks. all came together. There's the oh final piece of the puzzle. Gosh. Got it. Money. Yep. That money. Is crazy. Microtransactions. <laughs> Subscription service. Yeah, I, don't I know. can't. I can't imagine any any devs besides the ones that are finishing up their games right now on Unity. And you can you imagine the Unity panic on those people? Forward. Can you imagine the panic for those people that just oh, yeah. that are at the end of the development cycle that are about to release this and they're like, "Oh yeah, I have to I have to Oh, by the way, we're taking half your money, you know, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. Half your money. I mean, boom. Yep. I don't know, man. That's a that's a tough pill to swallow. Crazy stuff right there. All right, one last story and then we're going to go to Lando's casual corner. Take a trip Yay. down down the street. Uh, well, Speaking of overcharging for things, AAA games on iPhone, those are overcharged, if you ask me. Resident Evil 4 Remake coming to iPhone, uh, what is it, like a couple of weeks? It's pretty soon. I thought it was end of year for Resident Evil And they're Evil charging... 4. Village is in a couple of weeks before oh, Vill- it's later. Okay. Yeah. 60 They're going to charge, uh, not fourteen ninety nine like they should? Full price. Like, come on. Full price. No. <laughs> whoa, whoa, come whoa, on. whoa. Resident Evil 4, why would that ever be $15 right now? That game has never been that low yet. No, it wouldn't have because been 15 but I, I thought they Let's were going to charge like 30 I thought 30 was the price they were going to go for. Why, though, when it's the full game? Why would they make it any cheaper? Like when Because it's the on... platform it's being played on. Uh-huh. Yeah, think of, Nintendo, think of Nintendo Switch, though. Do they charge less on Switch? Can't compare. Why? That is a known entity, and everyone is used to paying sixty dollars a game for a brand That's new a game on Nintendo. That, yeah, this is the iOS App Store. Nobody pays sixty dollars for anything 
on the app store because there hasn't been triple A games on there yet. And you're gonna watch this one completely bomb. So I've, hold on, I'm I'm help me understand. I, I, this, I disagree with you, Tony, but you might be right. It might completely bomb. It might completely I, bomb. I think it's still stilly. The platform, if it's the same game, how can you charge different and amounts for and the same game on different platforms? Yeah, and there's and there's the other aspect. It's not the same game. It's touch controls. Yeah. You can a connect a controller screen. to it. They don't though. provide that. They don't provide that though. That's but they don't the provide a controller for the Xbox either, Owen. Yeah, that does. Yes, they they no. do. You, your Xbox comes with an with a controller. All oh, the game devs saying. don't. No, the game devs saying. don't. But consoles yeah, the, do. This is not a console. Yeah, no, right? I see what I see. What Owen's saying now. Uh, I think they've priced themselves out of the market at sixty bucks. I, I disagree. Think, it's the same I, game. I, I don't think anyone that wants to play this game will pay sixty dollars for it on a phone. They will go play it on a console or on a PC or I think somewhere again, else. I think you'd be surprised. I think. The younger generation, which we are not part of, does so much on their phone that they would what? do this on their phone. They do the free to play games. They do the games yeah. that they get charged by advertising time. They, ain't got no they don't pay maybe, sixty bucks. Maybe, maybe. Who knows? I don't like know. This, I can't say for sure. I think the market. I think the market is there. It doesn't make sense to me to to charge less than any other platform. Like if, what, if I were in charge of that, I wouldn't charge less just because it's on a different platform. Here's what I would say. If this worked on all of Apple's stuff, if it was sixty bucks for the whole Across ecosystem, the whole e- yeah, for I your computer, for your Apple TV, for everything, I would say that is a that is that's yeah. a doable price. But Absolutely. to have it only available on iOS devices and iPad, well, I, I yeah, iPad OS. I I mean, I still count it as the same one, even though it and Mac. I'm with Jaron. It's this not one. on the Mac. You don't get it on the Mac. Yeah, you for do. for the sixty bucks, you can play this on your MacBook Pro. Yeah, you can. It says that the the platforms on the official App Store page: Mac, iPhone, iPad, all for one Boom. price. Yeah, sixty bucks. I see. Uh, let's see. Sync your game across iPhone 15 Pro, iPhone 15 Pro Max, and iPads containing an M1 or later chip. Where I'm looking you, at where the are Mac. You seeing it? apps.apple.com oh Resident i'm looking Evil at the 4. article okay so Pre-order. it is expected december 31st 2020. It, it, it does work on macbooks macbook yeah. pros yeah okay now that i know that information 60 dollars is not unreasonable <laughs> <laughs> but if it was just we for win mobile, lando Thank we you. win <laughs> we win for once it feels if good it, to win jaron i it like was, this feeling if it was just for mobile devices absolutely crazy up in the night worst decision they could have made but I still you, don't understand why it's worth less on an iPhone than it is on a computer. Because that's not what the market is used to on iPhone. I am with you, Tony, though, on the touchscreen controls. Like touchscreen for some, controls are trash. For, for some reason, when they announced it on an iPhone, I just assumed everyone would use a controller. Then I saw a screenshot with touchscreen controls, yeah. and I just got a sinking feeling in my could stomach. You, could you like, imagine who trying to play, play this a precision horror shooter? With touch scroll, touch screen, yeah. touch screen controls, where, uh, where your hand work. is obscuring most yeah. of the, of the yeah, screen. Yeah, no, forget <laughs> it, forget it. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, but yeah, if it's on, if it's on the freaking, if it's on the MacBook Pros, okay, okay, well, maybe they, maybe they can just use the dynamic oh, islands gosh, and portion of the screen. That's the... <laughs> no, it's always changing size. How do you know where yeah. to put your finger? <laughs> ah. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, rant over. Uh, we came to a conclusion on that one that I was not expecting. And now let us trot down the street to Lando's Casual Corner. Lando's Casual Corner. So today's Casual Corner includes a specific game as well as that game's game developer because the ga- this game's game developer is phenomenal. Um, so this week's game is a game that I've played before in the past. I've recircled back to called Card of Darkness. Um, the developer for this game and the game designer for this game is by a guy by the name of Zach Gage. Make some really, really, really excellent phone games. Um, I believe. And does he charge sixty dollars for them. He does not charge sixty dollars okay. for them. Just making sure. Hmm. Do we need to? Do we need to point out that this is on Apple Arcade? So Android, yeah, it's, Android it's users need not it's, apply. It's it's available on and off Apple Arcade. Um, Owen, go look and see if his stuff's on Android, please. Since what's it called? Know, Zach. Uh, Card of Darkness. What's oh, okay? Hmm. Hello, that? Siri. <laughs> yep, she tried to jump hey, in. Hey, Alexa. <laughs> For those of you listening with speakers. Um, so anyway, Card of Darkness is a dungeon crawler card game. Um, hmm. It's played on a 4x4 grid. I know this yeah. is starting to become a theme from week to week, and I apologize for that. 
Um, what it does is it deals out a bunch of cards on the four by four grid and flips over the top ones, and then it plays like a card game where you are crawling through the dungeon trying to get through a pathway to the exit through the cards. And the cards can appear as um, items or they can appear as enemies. And you have to click which ones makes mo the most sense and strategically find your way through the dungeon. Um, the game design on this is very, very fun. It's very, very playful. It's cute. It's just, it's a good, you don't have to commit a ton of time to it. That's why it's a casual game. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good toilet game. It's really, really fun. Um, Zach Gage also makes games. No other, other ones you might have heard of is Really Bad Chess. Um, this That's game the name is, of the game, Really Bad Chess? Uh-huh. Um, well, it's interested. It's it's ridiculous chess. So it's like, what if you had 20 queens or eight rooks? What would you do? And, <laughs> you know, you play, it's it's a lot of fun. It's 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 a chess game made for people who don't play chess. Um, he has also made um, a really, really good Sudoku game. Um, he's also exist. made no Word Tower, thing. which is really, really good. Um, I'm trying to think of other ones off the top of my head. Anyway. Oh, speaking of games in Apple... Phenomenal um, game developer, Zach Gage. If you have an iOS dev device, just type that name into your phone. And if you have Apple Arcade, download all the Plus versions because they are all just so much How? fun and very, very, very well done. How do you like, spell Gage? G-A-G-E. Mm -hmm. um, uh, did you one see? Of the things, one of the things, so I'm, I'm still going, Tony. One oh, second. I thought you were done. No, 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 not done yet. <laughs> one of the things I'm trying to, try, one of the services I am trying to provide to you, dear listener, is we understand that there is a ton of crap on the app stores right now. Just a ton of it. All the Loads. app stores. I am Loads. trying to sift through the crap and find the good stuff for you. And maybe it's new stuff you know about, and maybe it's old stuff you don't. And we'll just there go from go. there. So anyway, today's I'll do game it with the three is... Net I'll do that with the three Netflix games out there. <laughs> all three of them. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> In fact, although there is a really good Netflix uh, Netflix game. Which one was it? I had it. Um, Arrow... The break Arrow What's it called? Breakthrough, the breakthrough type game is pretty fun. I can't remember what it was. I'll, I'll review that one too for you, Owen. Breakout, the breakout game. No, wait. Uh, anyway. Now I'm done, Tony. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, did you see that Apple News is gonna is gonna include uh, what are they called uh, crossword puzzles now? Yeah, like taking on day? New York Times. Sounds Ooh. like I think it. I think it's the New York Times crossword puzzle is what oh, they're is including. It? Yeah. You know what? Interesting. Don't quote me on that because if I'm wrong, I feel stupid. But let me. You wanna you wanna know an interesting yeah, fact about me? I do enjoy the one. New York Times crossword puzzle on a Sunday I think morning. Crossword puzzles are kind of cool. They're fun. Yeah, go go check those facts. Don't owe in that statement. You don't want to do that. Yeah, I'm looking right now. There you go. I don't um, think it's New York Times crossword. Oh, okay. So maybe it's their own. Isle yeah. of Arrows. Isn't that a Netflix game? Never heard of it. It's no very, very idea. good too. It's a tower defense game that's very, very good. It's a card based, card game based tower defense game. Also a very good casual game. Isle of Arrows. There you oh, go. There like it a, you got like a you got like a three for there, dear listener. In the casual corner. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's it's their own crossword puzzles, but it's gonna be on part of Apple News Plus. Uh with I iOS seventeen that, that just came out. So that's what it was. All right. Uh, well, I think that's it. That's uh, we, we made it to the end of our topics today. Thanks for mm -hmm. hanging out with us, dear listener. Big time shout out to our Patreon backers before we go. Patreon.com slash GadgetSpot. Check us out there. If you want to donate $6 a month or more, you get a shout out on the episode, which Jaron has for us right now. Thanks to David Broshinsky, Connor Keesaw, and Wolf of All Tony. Thank you, guys. James's Gameses, Andy Bird. Be the eight-year-old Travis Johnson. Check out the new Baldur's Gate 3 custom tech stickers at Pie Man Graphics on Etsy. Jeremy, No Name, No Color, Keslo, Eric Steinman, Eric Cruz, Nathan Motzkus, Matt Nelson. Y'all should check out Hendrix Craftsman on Insta and TikTok. Me, speechless like a Japanese video game. Dot, dot, dot. Josh D, Dick Messerly, Adam, Aaron Faulkner, Stuart, Lloyd, Joe. The opinion of 10,000... <laughs> what? You okay? Men is of no <laughs> value. <laughs> What if I told you I traveled to the future and came back right in the middle of me saying Joe? The opinion of oh. 10,000 men is of no value if they know nothing about the subject. Ryan M. and Adam Hecht. Thank you, guys. Do you smell toast? No, it was mm. him coming back. It was his It was his astral self coming back to himself. Consciousness coming back. Mm -hmm. I see. It was yeah. the toast. Well, I, had you, a, I had to say, you, oh. What do you need to worry? Or what do you need to warn us about? Uh, we're all remember. doomed. 
We're not yeah. going to survive 2024. We already cryptocurrency. Oh, cryptocurrency is the financial future. <laughs> <laughs> I don't on, think so, on. but maybe. I nope. missed an opportunity there. All you right. Tell us. Thanks, dear listener. And uh, we'll see you next week. But until then, Owen, take us out. Hey, we hope you care. Thank you.